Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you believe what has happened? It's Trinity Sunday or God's Sunday within the church, and we find ourselves living at a time when people still need to hear the gospel message more than ever. After adhering to many and various stay-at-home orders in an attempt to lessen the impact of the pandemic, we've found that the pandemic will continue in the months to come, and the effects of sin, death, and the devil continue to wreak havoc on society today. Most recently is the news of racism, the denial of human rights based on race, the abuse of authority, and the basic lack of love toward God and our neighbor. God the Father created everything in creation through His Word and declared it to be good. His Spirit hovered over the waters, and He breathed in Adam the breath of life so that he might live. And yet sin entered the world and began to choke out that breath. Without breath, we die. Today, the words, I can't breathe, have taken on a greater meaning. While many have died already, unable to breathe because of the coronavirus, these were the final words spoken by a man in police custody. The words he spoke have become symbolic of those who felt oppressed in our society for many, many years. This has brought about demonstrations, some peaceful and some not, in city streets, often clashing with civil authorities who have imposed curfews to deter looting and violence, all the while resorting to the use of tear gash, flash grenades, and rubber bullets so as to keep the peace in our nation. Yet change is needed. Can you believe what has happened? This is what is meant in verse 17 of our gospel reading when it says, And when they saw Jesus, they worshipped Him, but some doubted. Yes, some of Jesus' disciples still had a hard time absorbing all the events that had transpired. Begotten from God the Father, Jesus came to earth to bring about change, and in so doing, clashed with the established authorities of his time. It was some of those authorities who got one of his own disciples to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. Our Lord was arrested, tried, and sentenced to death. In the process, he was abused, beaten, mocked, and crucified. Yet he didn't use his divine power, rather out of his great love for us, he chose to die instead. Taking all of our sins upon himself, he breathed his last so that we might be forgiven and be able to breathe once again. On the third day, he rose victorious over death and the devil, and this is good news for us. Still, our Lord knew that change was still needed. In our gospel reading, he goes to his disciples and shares with them what many refer to as the Great Commission. And while it might be argued that there are five Great Commissions, in Matthew's gospel, he says to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He tells them to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to do all that he has commanded them. And we know from Matthew chapter 22, the greatest of these is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. At Pentecost, the church was born with the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the disciples began their work of teaching and baptizing all nations, which means all people. Those who have been baptized are received into the fellowship of God and are our brothers and sisters in Christ. Through daily repentance, the Holy Spirit works in and through all of us to bring about what St. Paul refers to in his letter to the Galatians as the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When this happens, we all tend to breathe a little easier. As followers of Jesus and fellow members of God's church on earth, we know that change is still needed. We have a mission in a world that is filled with sin, death, and destruction. What we see happening right now is rather unsettling. But still, it's the conclusion of a battle that's already been won. Clashes continue with pockets of resistance found in the sinful nature of men and women. And for now, we still continue to deal with the impacts of the coronavirus. Yet our great God continues to work through His church to bring about love and forgiveness to all people, fulfilling His mission and promising to be with us to the very end of the age. Can you believe what has happened? By the power of the Holy Spirit we can. And while it is Trinity Sunday or God's Sunday within the church, we're living at a time in our nation and in our world where people need to hear the gospel message more than ever. I pray that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would continue to open the hearts and minds of all people so that together as His people we might be His hands and feet in this world to bring forth His will and give Him the glory due His name. And while we might not be able to gather in our building right now, together we will continue to fulfill the mission that God has given to us here at Our Savior's Way which is to glorify God, make disciples for Jesus by forming relationships, experiencing Jesus together, and sharing God's love. In Jesus' name, amen.